Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I'm Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Hey, this is going to be a quick video, but as we know, we've been tracking this case out of the Fifth Circuit, a case called Cargill v. Garland. It's a case that dealt with the bump stock ban, and that case resulted in a finding in Cargill's favor. It appeared that the government was going to let it lie, but now it appears that, well, they want to stampede on up to the United States Supreme Court, which means that this issue is going to be resolved once and for all. So, Let's spend a few minutes and talk about how the government wants a final answer on bump stocks. Okay, so the case we're talking about, we have talked about this case before on this video right here, is the case of Cargill v. Garland. It is a case that came out of the Fifth Circuit. It was a challenge to what was ATF's ban on bump stocks, which took place during the Trump administration. It challenged that ban on many, many grounds, Second Amendment grounds, APA grounds, and a Fifth Amendment unconstitutional takings. The Fifth Circuit ruled in favor of Cargill, essentially then overturning the federal ban on bump stocks in now three states that comprise the Fifth Circuit. It appeared momentarily that the United States government was going to let that lie. However, earlier today we received word that the United States government is in fact petitioning for a writ of certiorari to the United States Supreme Court. Now, let's break down what the geeky words mean for you because you're going to hear this terminology and what we try to do here at Washington Gun Law is break it all down so that our English speaking friends can understand it. What is a writ of certiorari? A writ of certiorari is a fancy way of saying asking for permission to argue in front of the Supreme Court. That's all it is. The United States Supreme Court gets to accept review on cases. They don't have to accept review on cases and candidly only about one out of every 20 cases that apply to Supreme, the Supreme Court for review actually receive review. So the United States government government is going to ask or petition the United States Supreme Court to accept review. Now, one of two things is going to happen. And so this issue, we are going to get a final answer on it. And this is why I want you to be aware of it is either number one, the United States Supreme Court is going to accept review. We will have argument on it and we will ultimately get a ruling or the Supreme Court is going to affirm the Fifth Circuit. Now, why do I believe that that might not be likely? Well, because there is contrary rulings to the Fifth Circuit out of the District of Columbia, as well as I believe the Sixth Circuit and the Tenth Circuit. So we have an inconsistency of opinions throughout the circuit courts, making it more likely that the United States Supreme Court may accept review. But one way or the other, the bump stock issue is going to be resolved. Now, I know a lot of you are saying, okay, whoop de doo I was never got a bump stock, never had a bump stock, don't care about them. What big deal does that have to do with me? Well, let us remember that the statutory grounds under which the bump stock ban is being challenged, the procedural mechanisms by which the ATF went about banning bump stocks and all the rigmarole that went with it, is factually and legally identical to what the ATF has done with unfinished frames and receivers, as well as firearms with attached stabilizing braces. And so this case has far reaching implications, okay? This case will be a barometer for how many of these other very significant Second Amendment issues are gonna be resolved. So the case once again is Cargill v. Garland. We will put the links for it down below. We need to carefully watch this. The United States government is moving. They're gonna petition the United States Supreme Court for review. The court will decide later this year as to whether or not review will be accepted and we will keep you posted when we learn about that. Listen, if you got any questions about this, or anything else related to what's left of our Second Amendment rights, you should know how to contact Washington Gun Law by now. But if you don't, hey, all of that information is right there in the description box below. In the meantime, I want all of you to remember that part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here, is to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching and stay safe.